If you enjoy making toys, or maybe you'd like to start making toys, you've never done it before, wooden toys, obviously, uh, a great place to start is the website toymakingplans.com. They have, I think, something like 400 or more sets of plans for toys. These are all downloadable. You find the plans, you set of plans you like, you download them and you can start making them within minutes. Uh, this particular one is for a dump truck. I've made it before. I've got just a couple left in stock. I sell them online and in my retail store. And uh, it's about time to start. I make a few more to try to get ahead of uh, demand. Each set of plans is going to have uh, photos, like on the front there, diagrams of how the parts go together, and then there will be several pages of parts. You print these out, and then you can cut use these as your cutting uh, as your cutting diagram. There's, this particular one has four pages, and uh, some of the parts are this particular one are inch and a half thick. The rest are all half inch thick. So what I'm going to do is, since I've made this before, and I plan on making it again, the inch and a half thick parts are relatively simple. So what I did is I cut out one pattern for each, and I attached them to a piece of quarter inch masonite. And I'm going to cut those patterns out, and then rather than have to paste them on every piece of uh, each one of those patterns onto a piece of wood, I can just trace the pattern from this masonite. So let me move over to the scroll saw and cut these out. I'm going to start out with uh, the side piece here. Actually, this is a half inch thick, but um, it's easy, it's simple, and uh, I'll just use, I'll be able to easily trace it onto the half inch wood. Uh, you can see the outline of it, and there's a spot for a quarter inch hole, which I can drill afterwards. I, uh, so I'm using a number five blade on here, more than more than sufficient for something this thin. Those are going to be the two sides for the dumper or hopper. I'm not sure what the proper terminology is. Um, this particular piece here is going to be a is a spacer, and which the, the sides attach to that, and then of course the main body of the truck. Those are both going to be one inch, an inch and a half thick. What you want to do, there's a number of curves on this, but there is one place here where you got a, a, a you got a, a right angle. Uh, whenever it, you want to start with a sharp angle like that, when you can, uh, it's just you'll find from a, if, from experience that uh, if you start on a curve, you're going to end up when you get to that all the way around and to the other side of the curve. There's usually a little bit of a rough spot there. This avoids that. There we go. That's the main body of the truck. I'm going to run it through my thickness planer just to take the roughness off the top and the bottom. And uh, then I'll start laying out my pieces. Uh, you saw me make the pattern. I'm using the pattern now to lay out on here. I'm going to make three. Since I have a radial arm saw and a miter saw, I've come to the point where I leave the rip blade in my table saw. I used to use a combination, but I do some resawing, and the rip blade is just an excellent job in that. I have a video on it in case you want to learn a little bit more about resawing. But my blade is here. I've got it set so the teeth will clear the uh, the wood, but not much more than that. I already set my width for like six and three eighths, and. 
I will save a little bit of wood off the side of that. Wait till your blade comes to stop before you clear anything. And um, now we're good. We can start cutting these. That blank was a little bit long at 18 inches, so I took it to the bandsaw to uh, trim it down. It's a lot easier to deal with. Now, I happen to be fortunate enough to have two scroll saws. This particular one is a PS wood scroll saw. It's a belt driven and it's got a deeper throat than the jet scroll saw and, and it's deeper than most. So when I need to cut six quarter or eight quarter material, this is what I use. I there's your first of three spacers and then there's three bodies. I used a bandsaw to make a curve, kerf uh, most of the way to that to speed up getting to the starting point. There's your first truck body, and two to go. Okay, I've got my pattern for the sides of the hopper, and I'm going to draw them out on this half-inch piece now. Those are the six. Cut this. Length, always use hearing protection. Those will go to the scroll saw. Now, the rest of the parts are small and so what I did for them is I cut the patterns out of the paper and I'm going to attach them directly to the half inch poplar. Let me show you how I do that. There's more than one way of attaching patterns. My favorite is called scroll saw tape. I get it from a, a company called Scroller online. It comes in rolls. It's not cheap. It's about $25 for a roll, but it's a two-sided adhesive. Got my wood set up here. Put a board behind it. You'll see why I need that in a minute. Take the tape, find the end, which is not hard to do on this one. Press it down a little bit, and then what I do is flip the board over, use a utility knife, cut it to width, and do the same thing. If you don't have fingernails, just use the edge of your utility knife to lift up the edge. right off and then all you do is you take your patterns and press them in place all right this is one of the or here's two of the sides I'm gonna I drilled the hole for the uh, uh, part that goes through the two sides and through the body of the truck it allows the back to pivot I'm going to be working with half, a lot of half inch here, and in my experience, my favorite blade for my 
touch for my style for this saw all those things combined a number seven blade I'm using Pegasus modified geometry blades the number seven is really good for half inch I uh, usually like to find a right angle or an angle at least in a sharp corner uh, to start there is none on this but I'll start here on this edge and uh, there'll be a little bit of a rough spot when I come back and meet it but I can easily sand that out so let's do the uh, two sides There's a little bit of a spot there that's going to need some sanding, but not much. This is a good project for a beginning scroll saw user. Uh, there's no inside cuts at all, and the outside cuts are fairly gentle, curved, so it's a big, could be a good place to learn the techniques. I have a foot switch with this machine, so I can turn the blade on and off as I uh, need it. If you hear that, that tells you the blade is tensioned. Properly, if it's too loose, uh, you'll you can't track properly. If it's too tight, uh, the blade's going to break too quickly. Uh, actually, the blade shouldn't break at all if it's uh, properly tensioned and being properly used. And if you get to the point where you realize the blade is getting dull, you replace it before it breaks. But let's do the second bar here. <coughs> I'm cutting the two doors for the dump truck, the wheel skirt here, uh, I think that's what you call them anyway, the, the parts uh, that are, give you a little protection by the wheel. the doors this is a part that has a nice sharp corner that's a good place to start as I mentioned before let me say something here if you're new to scroll saw and you're not comfortable make, making sharp corners like this there's another way to do it you go past the intersection there okay and now you come back here and we'll start again when you get to something like this you go past it, you come back in. So you just do it. Once you get used to it, you can spin the blade and make a 90 degree corner and stay stuck. Alright, I'll show from the other side. I'm right-handed, so my hand may be in the way quite a bit here. I'm not sure. Let's take a look. It's a matter of practice. Just to get that coordination between your hand, your hands down, you're pushing the board into the blade, and you're pivoting whenever you when you're making a curve or a 90 degree angle. Uh, just takes practice. Start with simple patterns and work your way up to more complicated, more complicated ones. The each one of these gets two sides to that spacer. 
do a little hand sanding on these. Now the way that works is you take the spacer here and the side goes like that and another spacer goes on the other side so I'll glue those in place next do the same thing here this is a very easy project okay these smaller parts for the body of the truck We'll need a little bit of sanding, just like everything else. I usually take a piece of plywood, or in this case, particle board, that's flat, and I'll put a piece of sandpaper on top of that. Rub the piece across the sandpaper, and uh, that takes care of most of what needs to be done. You'll need a little piece of sandpaper like this to finish by hand. Those little fuzzy pieces that end up on the, on it anyway. Now, you can s I'll show you what I'm doing here. Here's the body of the truck and on each side there'll be one of these parts. The part goes there. Uh, at, at first time I did this it kind of threw me off in that I this doesn't meet with that, but then I realize that's the way it's supposed to be. So we'll put a little bit of glue on the bottom of this piece, as will all the others. Now, sometimes what it's a good idea to make sure that you have proper clearance here for the wheels so there's a wheel going to go there and a wheel going to go there it says dual wheels back uh, back here so uh, our two axles I mean and um, so sometimes I will check to make sure the wheels going to clear that properly put this on the other side and then I will glue the doors in place um, Like so. You probably could cut this all out as one piece, but by doing it this way, you've got the reveal from that saw cut that makes the door look like it looks makes a little, little bit more normal looking. It looks like a door. So I usually take the time to do that extra step. The, all the parts are glued in now. We've got the doors on both sides. And uh, that's all set. Last step was to is going to be to put the hopper. Um, I measured these across the back, and they're two and three eighths inches. So I cut some quarter inch dowel at two and three eighths. The plans called for a quarter inch hole here, but the hopper didn't move very smoothly. It, it was just too tight for a quarter inch. I made the hole here. 17, I made it just a tad bigger, 1764s I think it was, and then I, it, it's it's uh, snug but not too snug. I would have had a force to do with a hammer otherwise. And 930 seconds for here because this one I want to be smooth. So uh, let me line up one of these. There we go. I thought I had it. There we go. I think I got it. There we go, all through that side, through the other, and do some more round, do some rounding on this part here until that comes flat. So I'll do some of that and then we'll come back in a minute. Okay, a couple passes on the disc sander. You can see this sits flat now. It opens up nicely. It's exactly what you want it to do. I'll do a little bit of touch up sanding on some edges here. This is a child's toy. You don't want any sharp edges. You don't want this dowel falling out either. And so I will put a drop or two of glue on each side 
to keep the dowel in place just make sure when you do that that you don't let any glue get in the inside. Usually what I do is I put a, uh, push the dowel partway out, put a dowel, uh, drop of glue right on the end, then push the dowel back in place. Um, and if you just make sure you move this back and forth a few times while the glue is drying so you know that no glue got in there and uh, to gum up the works, then, then you're good. Time to paint. My little setup here, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, I put this little paint booth together out of plywood. There's an exhaust fan right up it, uh, right up above it. Uh, you may be able to hear that in the background. I usually use little scraps of drywall so I can put something on there when I'm, and I don't have to wait for it to dry to move it. I can just pick up the drywall underneath and move it. I put a, a little piece of wax paper on there. Because I found out sometimes if you once you've sprayed this, and you spray it again with a different color. Sometimes the uh, oh, first color will come off. Uh, don't want that to happen. Obviously, I've got my N95 mask here. I know from experience that the uh, yellow doesn't cover as well as some other colors. That's okay. put too heavy a coat on it it just runs so take your time put a coat make sure you get all the way around though with one coat and uh, set that one aside grab one of the other colors The blue and green trucks are done. As you can see, they roll nicely. The yellow one, as I mentioned, the yellow paint doesn't cover quite as well. So I'm going to uh, put another coat on that. Plus I ran out of an inch and a half wheels. So I'll get some more wheels and then I'll finish the yellow one. There's the green and there's the blue. This was a good project. Good project for a beginning scroll saw person. The there was nothing real complicated, no inside cuts. You'll need access to inch and a half and half inch material for this one.